Welcome to Think Tech. We're raising public awareness on technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is center stage. I am your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kuma Kukui Theater. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu very near Kumukuhua Theater. I am excited to let you know that my guest today makes things happen all over this island and you finally get a chance to hear from the man himself. His name is Mark Tyrone. He's an event producer here in Hawaii. Welcome, Mark. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, you do a lot of very cool things. I didn't realize how far you reach. You reach all the way up to the North Shore. Now. That's right. That's a new project, uh, working with the Hawaii Polo Club this year. And so we have uh, great polo matches every Sunday. That's out in Mokalia. So there's two polo fields that people are aware of here in Hawaii. Oh. The one's in Waimanalo, and we're up in Mokalia on the North Shore. Really beautiful area. So started working with them this summer, uh, and it's been great. I, I, I saw some of the pictures on the website. Polo dash, what is it? Polo yes, uh, whitepolo.com. Couldn't be Hawaii easy. Polo polo .com. Polo oh, okay. Uh, and I had no idea, uh, uh, you know, I know there's a history of uh, piano, pa paniolos uh, in yep. Hawaii, and I didn't realize how popular a sport polo is here that we have two polo courses. Sure, no, it's, it's a great point. A lot of people um, don't realize that, but it is popular here, and it actually dates back. Uh, polo was in Hawaii before it was in the, in Amer in, in the mainland. Um, oh, really? goes back in the 1800s, uh, originally a sport from India, and um, it's been here since, I believe, the mid-1800s. Oh, wow. And um, one of the players um, shared some stats about how many horses, how, how big the equestrian lifestyle is uh, here in Hawaii, and it's something like, I don't know, 20,000, 30,000 horses in Hawaii? Which, you know, driving around Oahu, you wouldn't, you certainly there's wouldn't There's only a million that. people on the whole um, island, so that's yes, a lot. Yes, I would imagine there's probably a good number on the big island, but anyways, yeah, uh, so... Uh, great equestrian oh. culture here, actually. Um, on this island, a little hidden, but uh, we've got that whole area. Dillingham Ranch is right across the street from Hawaii Polo. And um, you feel it when you drive up. You know, there's no traffic on that side of the island. And so you get there so quickly. And once you pass, uh, you know, you get into Wailua and, and that area, it becomes the big open ranch lands. And mm -hmm. it just has this impact you can't miss. It's, it's really the country. And when you get to our property, uh, we're right on the beach, uh, beautiful view out towards, you know, we're looking out at uh, Waimea Bay and up at Kuhuku Point and, you know, really, really great view. And then on the other side, when you're standing uh, next on the ocean side, you're looking up at the Waianae Mountains. And it's actually the tallest mountain range on Oahu. The one peak is uh, mm -hmm. almost a mile high. It's over 4,000 feet high. So it's, it's stunning. It literally is like that. That's it, it's a big project. And I was I was had my concerns about making that level of commitment. Um, about 20 weeks a year is this season, and um, and the reason what really drove me is is just what absolutely wonderful special place it is there. Oh wow! So this goes through Labor Day. The season goes through Labor Day. Exactly. So right? it's every Sunday. Uh, the gate opens at 11. Uh, matches start at 1:30, and they go till about 5 o'clock. And immediately after, every week we've got live entertainment. Uh, we had Barry Flanagan out in June. Uh, this weekend, Jeff Peterson is playing. You know, he's been on. Uh, he's had songs on two Grammy award-winning albums. Uh, six Hoku Awards, oh, wow. you know, one of the best acoustic guitar players really in America. Uh, he's played with Eric Clapton and Boz Skaggs and um, super special. So he's performing as soon as the polo matches end this Sunday. And we're doing a tribute um, to the first lady of Hawaii polo. It's Elizabeth Murph Daly. And she is a former player herself. We have a great photo here. That's this weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love that. It's uh, that it's, it's energy. She, you know, one of the great ambassadors of polo here in Hawaii. So. Her husband and her uh, founded the club over 50 years ago. So they've been having uh, consecutive, every year there's been a polo season for 53 years now. Oh, wow. Um, and so we're doing a tribute uh, to, she's affectionately known as Murph, to her family and friends. Uh, she, um, you know, still uh, a, a prominent member at the clubhouse and, you know, still holds court every, just about every week. And so excited about that celebration. We've got uh, the highest, um, the fastest polo of the season. There's a tournament this weekend, so there's going to be two the semifinals on Friday. Uh, that's not a public event, but they'll have that to see who ends up in the finals. Okay. And then we'll feature the finals um, on Sunday. We've got uh, polo players are ranked up to 10 goals. The highest is about 10 goals. I think it's less than 50 people in the, ever in the history of polo have ever had a 10 goal rating. And uh, one of our visiting players from New Zealand is a five goal player, which is really, um, that's near all-star level at the pro level. Oh, okay. So, um, some really exciting polo this weekend. We've got Jeff Peterson, the tribute to Murph. Uh, we've got um, 
I believe some, some Rolls convertibles and other really nice cars coming out to help with that celebration. They're always fun to see you some of that history. And you encourage tailgating? Yeah, tailgating is absolutely welcome. <laughs> uh, it's kind of bring your own anything, if, if you'd like. Uh, coolers, grills, um, beverages, really whatever you wish. Uh, really one of the best tailgate properties uh, in Hawaii because you have that. We actually get Wanai weather, so I don't, I don't want to jinx us, but uh, traditionally uh, very dry out there. So the whole rest of the North Shore can be rainy and uh, will be dry out on that side of the peninsula. So um, great weather is great views, trade winds. Pictures yes. of tailgates. So the gentleman on the right, he oh, insists, nice. uh, he's the older gentleman there, that last picture. Uh, his folks say that uh, he makes sure we, you know, insist that we come out every single weekend. So that's one of our biggest polo fans right there on the right. It's a really diverse, wonderful audience. Uh, we have a lot of young folks as well. Um, that's Mike Daly, his father st started the club. Uh, he was a GM uh, after his father, and now his son is the general manager, Devin Daly. And Charlie Muldoon there, uh, just so happens, um, he not only is basically the rules commissioner for U.S. Polo, uh, he's also one of my best friends from high school. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Will you came fell into that naturally, didn't you? Yes, there's a couple ties there. It's helped me I was, uh, it was meant to be. Were you a fan of polo before you started working with them? I grew up in Palm Beach, Florida, and uh, just west of us is really the polo capital of the world. Argentina is, oh. you know, has the best polo ponies, and it's, it's the biggest part of the... It's more ingrained in the culture there than anywhere else. But uh, the biggest polo events in the world happen at Wellington, which is uh, basically grew out of my hometown. Um, so that's kind of an offshoot of Palm Beach. It's just west of uh, Palm Beach, Florida. And um, so, yeah, we used to go out to polo matches when I was a kid, and uh, they were a big deal and big fun. But I wasn't, you know, I wasn't an addict or, you know, this, this you know, I wasn't fanatical about it, but definitely enjoyed it. Um, and out here, it's it, it really, one of the things I love is the Aloha spirit is, is really ever-present. Um, and it reminds me, I grew up playing lacrosse. That was my sport uh, from elementary school through college. And I ran a club program here, and this this um, used to run an international tournament every year. And what's unique about Hawaii is, uh, with the lacrosse, it trans. I see the same thing with polo, and that is, you've got some literally some of the best players in the world that are often on the field, and but they're not they're not doing it here for flash. They're really doing it. The love of the game mm -hmm. is the driving force. And so these polo matches that you see on Sunday, you know, it gets heated, but it's not. You know, when, when the game's off, you know, everyone's. Uh, you know, sharing stories and having a good time together, and it was, it's, it really is the love of polo at the root of it. You, you can feel it, you can see it. Oh, very cool. So, uh, so let me ask you this, because I, I, I know we have a lot of other things that we need to talk about that you do. Um, uh, so you're encouraged to tailgate, see the match, and then stay for the music, which is awesome, in God's country. Exactly. No, you, yeah. you hit it nail on the head. So. Um, there's different times to come out. Some people like to come out early, you know, and go back earlier. Uh, I love coming, have, you know, before I was there, you know, from the crack of dawn till the last person was there. Not quite the crack of dawn, but there were some pretty long days. Um, I like that kind of later shift. You come for the last match, starts around 3.30. So you come in around 3, you catch that, the full, you know, all of the last match, which is the fastest match of the day. And then you've got great entertainment from 5 to 7. We go all the way to sunset. So you're there from like 3 to 7, which is, you know, a nice period of time and we're right on the beach we've got great swimming there's this huge beautiful channel it's great for swimming we've got an outdoor shower so really you know oh. our um, our tagline is Sunday in the country and that's because it really is this, this full day experience it, you know you can you know bring a lot of people bring their um, I don't know the formal name but it's like a cornhole you know that game where you toss oh, yeah. a hole in the board uh, I'm a big it's bocce cornhole. fan you know it's great areas <laughs> for playing bocce um, oh. you know fishing diving um, it's really all there. It's, it's, it's a, a full experience. How much does it cost to get in? Great question. It's um, free for Keiki under 16, so 15 and under is totally free. So for a family, it's cheaper than going to the movies because general admission is, is $12. Uh, and then there's oh. a discount, $2 discount for military and lifeguards. And, uh, and Keiki's free, so literally it's, it's less expensive than going to the movie. And you can bring anything mm -hmm. you want if, if you want to go that route. We also have great vendors on site. Um, Lulu's Mexican Grill is there every single week. And really, uh, it's good. The best Mexican. There's some Mexican restaurants that I feel are on par with her, but I, there's no one I think that's better. Oh, and so okay. she has that a different was very menu. very diplomatic of you. It's true, though. <laughs> I, you know, I'm a big fan of um, Maria Benitez here. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I love the uh, love the family, and I love their food. Uh, Lulu's is is, uh, is fantastic, and she mixes it up every week. She has something different, and then we have a, a food vet, an additional vendor, food vendor every week. Uh, last week it was Square Barrels. 
Uh, they came mm. out and they did the Osado style grilling right on site uh, with, uh, with uh, Chiave wood and um, you know, they do gourmet burgers and all kinds of wonderful things. So um, it's also easy, you don't have to pack things, you just, you just come out and we have everything right there for you. We have a bar on site uh, with, uh, with everything you could ever want. Um, and good fun, and we do themes. So our June theme was uh, Summer Breeze, kicking off the summer. And then this month is Paniolo Paina, and next month is Sustainable Harvest. So we're gonna have all kinds of different sustainability mm. entities, uh, including some merchants. There's some boutiques that, you know, with the fabrics that they use and the, the way that, um, the, you know, they, the kind of the, the way they handle the textile rather than working in a sweatshop. It's, you know, it's a sustainable way to do things. So oh. we're gonna be showcasing that throughout August and our, our season finale, Labor Day weekend. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> it's a mouthful. So it is a mouthful. There's a lot going on. So y you're the guy who, and I know you, you, you are a promoter <laughs> by, yes, by nature. Absolutely. So you want to do that. Let's, let's talk about what it is that you actually do. So you're booking, did, did they already do this? They had, before you got on board, yeah, they already so the, had the music and all of that? The music was, a lot of fundamentals were there. Um, so the, yeah, the music's been going ever since I've been familiar with Polo. They've always had the music uh, right after. Um, so my focus was to, to, to build on the, they really had a great product to begin with and try to see how we could polish that and, and make it a bigger, more, a bigger, greater experience. Um, so, you know, my ideas that I brought to the table, uh, are the themes. It's a long season. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, business, there's, there's a lot of reasons why we do this, but at the end of the day, you have to pay the bills. You know, we've got someone out there, you know, they got a huge uh, polo field is 350 yards long. So just ma just the water to keep that, that alive in a dry region out there oh, yeah. is a lot. And then your maintenance staff and, um, and all that, and all the ponies, obviously. Um, each match, a six trucker match would use, each player would have six different ponies. So, and there's four players oh. on a team. So that's uh, 24, polo, 24 ponies on a side. So 48, we've got 48 horses involved in a full, oh, wow. full polo match. Um, so there's obviously a lot that you have to invest there. Um, so when you're looking at the business, you're saying, uh, you know, if I just, there's one of the, you know, effective promoting is you, you work pretty hard and, and you're handing people flyers and you're, you're you know, you're figuring out ways to, to have people see your brand and see the experience that you offer. Um, but if you just pound the pavement like that every week, uh, everybody goes deaf and you, you know, you're not going to break through. Oh, yeah. So on the business side, uh, the themes help you have something new and fresh every month. Um, so that's, I brought that concept out and, and it's been great because we, with the program, uh, when you make that commitment, you're not exactly sure how to, you know, if you're going to get the program you envisioned and I've uh, been really happy with, uh, I'm, I'm biased because I put the program together, but I think it speaks for itself on paper. <laughs> if you go to whitepolo.com and you look at uh, what we did in June and what we're doing this month, uh, next week we'll be announcing the details of our August Sustainable Harvest theme. Um, but we had a great program and uh, so those are the things that I brought that bringing the themes. We also, um, some, at the entertainment, we, you know, we were able to, uh, to invest some more in the entertainment and have some, some artist names that people are more familiar with and, uh, and some people that really focused on, on music as a full-time profession. Mm. Um, and you know, next month, we've got one artist I'm not allowed to announce yet, but uh, he's one of the most popular artists in Hawaii. Uh, we'll be announcing that next week. And uh, our season finale is with Taimani, uh, who's you know, really, um, Wonderful musician, you know, of household name for with most households here in Hawaii, and um, and just someone with a great career. And it's nice to have her do a, a big showcase there uh, for our season finale. Awesome. Before we go to break, if I've never seen, I've never seen a polo match before. Ever in your life? Never wow. in my life. It's time. Wow. All right. Um, am I going to be able to understand what's going on? Is it basically trying a bunch of people trying to get a thing into a net? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> yes, and, and for at the, it boils down to there's the goal is two posts. So it's, you have to you're hitting the ball in between two posts, and uh, it's four on four and uh, the the number one rule is and it's, it goes to safety. Yeah, and you can, as long as you know this rule, and we talk about the rules every week. Uh, so we've got a full, you know, full PA system and announcing going on during the match. So, uh, yeah, if you come to Polo, uh, you don't, you know, we have some rules, pamphlets, and things like that. So uh, we're ready for people that have never seen Polo okay, before. Good. And uh, the one major rule is when you, when you hit your shot, uh, you have a clear line to that ball where no one's allowed to cross that line uh, within reason. If, if it's really far ahead, then you can cross the line. But um, for 
there's a good distance where you have a direct line that ball no one's allowed to cross and that's it's for safety because you've got you know polo polo ponies going at full speed uh and if you take a tumble you know the, uh fatalities are not uh you know they, they happen unfortunately mm -hmm. in polo from time to time uh in uh, august we're actually celebrating a former hawaii polo player who um who lost his life at, at, at uh, playing mm. uh, at our fields uh, in the 80s, uh, Aldo Paca, uh, a very successful local uh, entertainer. He was on a lot of, uh, he had leading, well, he had support, great supporting roles in some of the original Hawaii Five O's, um, and uh, he was a cocktail singer in Don Hosevain and, and very successful here. And he was one of the greatest players ever in Hawaii. He was a five goal rated player, which is the highest any Hawaii player has ever been rated. Um, oh, wow. And there's an accident and a fall, and um, so that's why you know the rules are critical, obviously critically important, um, and that's the one. So you understand, like, okay, why is it someone running in like that? And but uh, easy to pick up. Okay, good, and it's the sport of kings. It's right? The sport of kings. Didn't I learn exactly. that in Trivial Pursuit? <laughs> okay, we're gonna go to our break now. Thank you very much for that explanation. We're gonna talk about. Now we're gonna get into all of the other things there that you do. Go. A lot of stuff that you do down in Chinatown, and why why you do those things. I'm so happy about that. I'm glad we're getting to that. <laughs> Look forward to it. Okay, we're going to take a little break. Please stay put. We'll see you on the other side. Aloha. This is Reg Baker with Business in Hawaii. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We would love to hear from you, and you can reach us in several different ways. We have a hotline that you can call in at 415-871-2474, or you can email us at thinktechhawaii.com or you can tweet us at ThinkTechHI. Looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next show. Aloha. Aloha, everyone. I'm Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on ThinkTech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We are here to talk about news, issues, and events local and around the world. Join me. Aloha. Aloha! This is Rez McJackal. The University of Hawaii football team under Rolovich is going to get wet this season. In case you didn't understand me, the University of Hawaii football team is going to kick butt under Rolovich this season. So be sure to follow us on Think Tech Hawaii and Hibachi Top. I'll be at every game. And remember, aloha! Hi, welcome back. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series. If you would like to ask us a, a, a question while we're talking or add to the conversation, you may do so on Twitter. Just tweet to at ThinkTechHI, and we will see you on the screen right here. Um, also, if you would ever like to join us in the studio audience, you can do that. Just email Jay, that's J-A-Y, at ThinkTechHawaii.com, and he will hook you up. Okay, we're talking with event producer Mark Tyrone. Um, so I know you foremost from Hullabaloo. Yes. Did you, is that your baby? Did you invent Hullabaloo? That's a ex uh, perfect description. That is my baby. <laughs> okay. That's uh, how I've been, what I've called it from the get-go. And I did, uh, did create that. So that was um, going to Lahaina and seeing um, the Halloween celebration. They have a huge Halloween celebration for, it's, they've kind of had some, they, they, they canceled it not too long ago and they brought it trying to bring it back. But for many years, they had about 20, 30,000 people on Halloween night in Lahaina, huge event. So I was there um, in the 90s three times, and the costumes were amazing, the, the energy of the people were amazing, and there was, but there's nothing else. There, there was no programming. Uh, you know, just, just getting oh, just a drink was like a battle, you know? So mm -hmm. it was just not, other than the costumes, the experience was, was disappointing for me. And so a lot of Hall Blue came out of wanting to inspire people and give them something to be proud of their community and have this, this you know, this arts and, and celebratory experience uh, that they, they were proud of, you know, and, and, and made them, I don't want to put a smile on them face, but something you could plan on for the year and say, this is one of the reasons why I love living in Honolulu. Mm. Oh, cool. So it involves, there's costumes, there's a fun run. Yes, yeah. uh, so we got the Hullabaloo Marathon, uh, raising money for uh, arts nonprofits. So we got to work with Kumukuo Theater the first year we did that, which was two years ago for the uh, Hullabaloo Marathon. And it's, it's not really a marathon, it's just a short... it's like around a block. Yes, <laughs> we, now it's a, good, it's a little longer, but very short, absolutely. Um, it's a joke of a name. And uh, every runner raises money for a local arts and culture nonprofit. Uh, so that's been great, something new that we added. And it's really two stages. We have... Um, we start about about five o'clock this year. We might move it up to four thirty, and now we're down uh, in the Regal section of Historic Honolulu. So uh, our main stage is on the front lawn of the Hawaii State Art Museum. 
So we moved there last year. Uh, we loved it. Uh, everyone that came down loved it. And the Hoist Art Museum loved it. So uh, it's really a match made in heaven. And uh, we'll be back there this year. So we start everything off down there. We close Richard Street and Hotel Street between Richard and Alakea. Uh, so you have the big lawn in the Hoist Art Museum. We do a VIP uh, section inside the museum, which is uh, oh, know, wow. amazing work they've done there with their, their courtyard that they have in the back. I don't know if have you seen yeah, that in action yet so at night. It's really there. beautiful, really, really well done. Um, and multiple stages in the street. So the entertainment that, that, you, that I didn't see in, in Lahaina that you see here is, you know, last year we had Booker T. Jones. He's a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award winner, and uh, he was our headliner, you know. And we also had Taimani performed, and uh, Mike Love, one of uh, uh, a local artist uh, who was really having breakout success uh, recently, and that's going to continue because he's so talented. Um, so. Uh, great local artists and also um, at least one national headliner every year. So that's the street festival from the music goes from about five till ten. And you know, we've got uh, great food vending and um, lots of things there. And then uh, we move to clubs afterwards. So uh, usually there's about eight to ten clubs. Uh, people want to go later, then we'll go till about two in the morning if you'd like to go that route. And uh, we have the section on Hotel Street between Newt Wano and Smith Street. Uh, which is kind of the town square for, for that section of Chinatown. And so that's closed to vehicles, so it's a nice congregation area to meet friends and branch off from there. And um, so all the clubs there and some other ones uh, that participate and great entertainment there. And we're likely going to be adding so a new location as well as part of that. We were um, at capacity last year, and we're looking at partnering with a, a great property uh, here in downtown Honolulu that will uh, expand our capacity also uh, even add a great piece to our story because you know now we're we something once we switched the new location last year um, something that I really love personally and, and it is valuable to I, I believe all of Hawaii is we're celebrating uh, just about all of historic Honolulu you know so we go from that regal section which is right next to Ilani Palace and the Hawaii State Art Museum you know the YWCA there mm -hmm. the state capitol um, those are you know the you know historic properties and that you know literally the king's king and queen's area um, so we start there and we finish in Chinatown, which is really the blue collar part of historic Honolulu that supported, you know, all of that, supported the rest of the island. Yeah. Um, so there's, it's the only event that I know of that incorporates both of those. And that's, that's a huge piece of our history, you know. And um, Honolulu is not just some big crazy party. It's, it's, it's Halloween Aloha is really the root of it. Um, and uh, folks who've been there, I think, will we'll nod their head that that is a good description. And um, if you haven't been here, you come down, you'll, you'll feel that. Uh, it's a great, diverse group that comes. Uh, you know, over half of the people last year were over 35 years old. So if you look at other oh. street festival events in Honolulu, except unless you're like at a high-end food event, but if you do ones that are focused on music and, you know, costumes, um, you usually have a not as diverse of a demographic. Uh, so we do surveys every year. And actually last year, over 90% of our attendees had a two-year degree or higher. Um, so people aren't just coming for the big crowd or, you know, to drink a beer in the street. Uh, they really love the energy, the interaction with the people in the costumes and, the, you know, the music programming that we have and, and that, the whole experience. So. Very cool. So it really is a, a community event. Absolutely. And that's, that's, that was the vision from the, that was my hope from the get-go. Uh, that one uh, in my head was based on I stumbled upon a European street festival in the 90s, just after I graduated college, I got to um, go to Europe for a bit, and everyone in the whole town was at the event. You know, it was literally, you know, tutus that, you know, uh, probably 90 years old that were out and, you know, part of it, uh, to, to the little keiki, to the whole nine yards, and there was no exclusiveness. It was, it was just everyone, this was, it was a, this congregation of the entire community. I mean, you know, not every person was there, but it was a range of yeah. the whole thing. And uh, it's powerful. One of my, one of my personal mantras is, is Inclusivity. There's nothing more powerful than inclusivity. You know, when you bring people together, when you see that that mix happening, there's bonds and energy that's created. That is, I, I really believe that's the most powerful force uh, there is in humanity. Oh, that's very cool. Did you feel like you were inspired then, back in the '90s, and thought this is what I want to do? No, I, obviously I noticed. You know, it was I. I hadn't seen something an event like that before, so it stuck in my mind because okay. of that. And then when you're, you know, when I was looking at Hobbalu and um, Murph has been doing that great St. Patrick's Day celebration every year. So I said, well, look, Chinatown, this is, this is the perfect place for this type of event. And when I think, well, what would be the ideal event? Yeah, that, that European 
uh, gathering uh, came to mind and was uh, a driving force. Very cool. And you, uh, this is what you do. This is your main form of... It is now, yes. So for uh, many years I had two hats and um, I'm an attorney, a uh, graduate of UH Law School here. And, um, but I did sales for about 16, 17 years with a company called LexisNexis, which is a great experience. The um, great business, great company, uh, great organization, so many good people there. And I worked with a lot of my clients who are wonderful people that I learned a lot from. And so I love, it was great to be in sales for that long to really get it ingrained in what you do. And it's just, it's a matter of, it's a method of communication, you know? Right. And you know, you are one of our leaders in the arts business, you know, in the business of the arts community. And, and we can say that, that's not just uh, a term I throw out, there's, there's real substance in that. With the success you've had at Kumu Kuhua Theater, I've been a partner at the Arts at Marsh Garage for seven years now, and uh, you've really made a difference uh, there in the last year. Uh, oh. Massive, massive difference. And so... Um, Thanks. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, that's one of the reasons I was so happy to be here and knew I'd be comfortable because uh -huh. I, I felt um, really lucky and fortunate to, uh, to spend some time together. Wow, I really appreciate that sunshine blown up my Yay. screen. There. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, and I'm really glad that you're there doing this. And I, I absolutely agree. When you get people together, a uh, silly little story, uh, Fourth of July had plans to go do things and it rained, you know. Yes. So you know. my friend and I are, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? I don't know. And we were looking at movies and decided on Finding Dory because it's, the, it's a community thing. You know, right. you can't be right. outside right. doing a community thing, but at least you go and you know you're going to be... And there were tutus people, right? and little kids, yeah. and it was, you know it had that really lovely feel. That's to a great story. It. I would never think of that as yeah, as that movie experience. And that kind of movie is that's just the, the ticket to literally to bring those people together. Yeah, yeah. So what do you have on the horizon? What's coming up? You got two minutes left. Yes. Uh, well, Hall <laughs> is coming up. So there's uh, a photo for, of me from last year <laughs> that we shot down at the Hawaii State Art Museum. You couldn't tell there, but uh, <laughs> nice. having some fun. And uh, so that's Halloween weekend. Uh, the main day is October 29th, the Saturday before Halloween. Okay. And um, there's a couple other, there's, there's some properties that have opened their doors uh, for some, some large scale concerts that I'm looking at with some people and seeing if uh, something can definitely work there. We're just trying to figure out uh, what that's going to be initially. Okay. Uh, and I've been doing some, working on some projects with Ron Artiste II. Uh, amazing, I, you know, that's a big word, but, but it's apt. Um, extremely talented artist, uh, you know, you may have... His family, his father, Ron Artis, uh, and his mother, she's a trained, um, trained uh, operatic singer and classical singer, uh, and his father was at the highest level of music in L.A., played with Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson. Oh. So they moved their whole family to Hawaii, ended up in Haleiwa, and all were homeschooled, all, uh, Ron and his 10 brothers and sisters, and they would play music for the public every day. They were right next to Coffee Gallery, was their house, so it was open, and literally people would come in and, uh, and they would play music, not all day, but every day they would... Uh, do live performance, and it were, they weren't jam sessions. They were it was it was you know music training. Uh, their dad is this major disciplinarian. Uh, their late father, great great individual, and um, so I've had the pleasure of doing a number of things with Ron uh, this year. And um, music is a huge driving force for me as well. And that is the there, it's it's music purity at it, at its best. You know, it, it's uh, they go on and on about that, but. That's been great. He's releasing an EP with his uh, trio um, in August. He's going to be at the Blue Note here on this island. He's going to be at Charlie's. Such a fabulous room. Yes, great room. And it brings yeah. such fabulous uh, artists to Hawaii. So yeah. uh, it's been great to see. Uh, so working with him and, uh, you know, last year I partnered with Taimani and uh, did her, worked with her for her debut at Hawaii Theater. So it was her first big major ticketed show. She, you know, plays at lots of great festivals around the whole state and really around the world now. But she had done a big ticketed show here in Hawaii, and uh, she did uh, a full theatrical production. You know, we um, uh, she she did choreography, different choreo you know, different dancers, uh, narration. She wrote all the narration. She wrote oh, wow. seven or eight songs just for that piece. Wow, um, major where, undertaking. So, where do people go if they want to hear about everything that you've got going on? Yes, right now it's uh, rootsmusichawaii.com. Root